In a recent interview, Jessica Jung addressed her departure from Girls' Generation and it made quite a few headlines. Jessica's departure from Girls' Generation remains one of the industry's biggest mysteries. It's been nearly 10 years since she left and yet people are left with a lot of questions, the main being, what exactly happened on September 30th, 2014, the day she was kicked out, and what is the relationship between the members now? Well, there haven't been many interactions in the recent years, if any. However, recently there were rumors that Tiffany had shaded Jessica during an event. Tiffany had been attending an event this summer and was surrounded by fans who were looking for a chance to talk to her or get her attention. In one of the videos from the event, a fan that was attending shouted the line, Tiffany, bring it back to 140! Tiffany didn't hesitate for a second as she yelled back, while to some this was a normal interaction, people brought to attention that the line that Tiffany was responding to was Jessica's line from Girls' Generation's song, I Got a Boy. This is why people thought that Tiffany was being sassy while responding, with a few even claiming that she was being particularly shady towards her former member. Twitter users responded to the video with, I can't help but think this is shade and so messy for using Jessica's line. However, this is probably not the case. Thinking about it, Tiffany probably even forgot that this was Jessica's line and thought of a funny response to the fans' remark, even if the members don't get along with her, they're all grown women and won't be so publicly shady about each other. But even though the members themselves aren't shady, the same can't be said for SM Entertainment. In November of this year, the music video for the group's hit song Mr. Mr. reached 100 million views on YouTube. This was an incredible achievement, but the company ended up calling causing some controversy with the way they chose to celebrate the milestone. They made a tweet to show their appreciation to the fans for loving and supporting the girls all these years. This tweet had a collage of all the girls in the Mr. Mr. era except for Jessica. This wouldn't be such a big deal, but Jessica was a part of the group when the comeback had happened, so excluding her seemed unnecessary to fans and very belittling. They believed that her efforts and all the work she put in as a member during her time with the group deserved acknowledgement and respect. A Twitter user expressed, the song would be what it is without her. Stop disrespecting Jessica. Another said, Jessica is no longer a member, but it's not wrong to give credit where credit is due because Jessica was part of this era. Others argued that since it has been nearly a decade since Jessica left the group, there's no reason for the company to include her in the group's content. After her departure in 2014, it would be normal for SM to focus more on the group's current members rather than acknowledging someone who hasn't been associated with them for so long. However, what's really noteworthy in telling us about the status of her current relationship with the Girls' Generation members is a recent interview she did. On November 22nd, Jessica released her first mini-album in six years titled Beep Beep. Since it has been a while since she's made any music, she took the time to promote the album through an interview on the Daily Catch-Up podcast. There were a lot of things that were discussed. Her early years as an idol, her time as a member of Girls' Generation, the career she had as a soloist after leaving the group, her fashion brand, and more. However, there was no chance that she'd be talking about Girls' Generation and not be asked about what happened. The host mentioned the time after she left the group and the speculations that started on what really happened. While they acknowledged that they couldn't exactly ask for the specifics of the situation, they appeared to be curious about how Jessica handled the whole thing, especially knowing how emotionally heavy it must have been. They wondered, what went through your head during that period of time and at the same time also then also trying to make your brand work? To this, Jessica answered that she always tried to put the past behind her and focus on the brighter side of things. She said that while that particular time was one of the hardest that she had experienced in her life, she had a good support system who helped her get through it. Because of her friends and family, she didn't feel alone and she even used this time of struggle for personal growth. She was also asked about the biggest difference between being a group member and a solo artist. Jessica's answer was interesting to say the least. She said, you get to choose everything. You know if you're in a group then the majority wins. This goes for every single thing from the little things to the big decisions as well. She went on to say that it's a system that you need to get used to and be okay with, admitting that she used to be fine with it back then. However, she shared that she enjoyed her current situation a lot more, and it's no surprise. The main thing about the fact that Jessica left the group is that we don't know what happened that led to this decision. There's been many theories about this too. Rumors of disagreement between the members, internal feuds, Jessica deciding to leave the group on her own, SM kicking her out. 
The biggest speculation is that the other eight members held a meeting and unanimously decided to kick her out of the group. The rumor started when Chinese insiders and Jessica's fan sites, who were close to staff members and managers in SM Entertainment, had started posting about how Jessica had left the group involuntarily. To make this more weird, these posts were way before the official announcement of her departure. These insiders said that the decision hadn't been hers, and even wrote about how if Jessica were to go to the Chinese fan meet that was scheduled on September 30th, the other members would refuse to go. Jessica had even addressed this on Weibo before SM had released the statement announcing the news. The post was later deleted, but according to her, she was asked by the company and the members to leave the group. After the post was deleted, people thought she was hacked, but unfortunately, that turned out to be the truth, or at least from Jessica's perspective. She then released an official statement, revealing the company and the other members had been okay with her starting blank and eclair, but things changed a month later. She wrote, The other members of the group had a change of heart. At a meeting of the other eight members, it was decided that I would be told to either turn my back on my business or leave the group. Among other things, Jessica expressed that it was unfair for them to corner her like this, and at the end of September, she got a notice that informed her she wasn't a member of the group anymore. This explained why she had been absent from the fan meeting event in China. She also mentioned the so-called ultimatum in her novel Bright. As you might know, Jessica wrote two fictional novels, Shine and its sequel Bright, which center around a Korean-American character named Rachel and her journey of debuting in a famous famous nine-member girl group named Girls Forever. It sounds very familiar to the real-life events that took place, so it's not unfair to believe that there's some truth in the books. Well, most importantly because it was based on Jessica's own experiences in the industry. While the first book briefly touches on the topic and Rachel's relationship with the other members, the second book presents the character with a difficult situation. In one of the chapters, the eight members of Girls Forever express dissatisfaction with Rachel's newly launched fashion line. This detail suggests that Jessica's recollection of of how the eight girls' generation members isolated her and played a role in her decision to leave the group might be partially true. Specifically in the book, the members in Girls Forever point out the many times that Rachel had been late for rehearsals in Los Angeles, even though they had also been late before. Then, all eight of them go to the manager together and express how unhappy they were with Rachel's fashion brand. It is then decided that they wouldn't go to the important concert if Rachel happens to join them. As a result of their complaints, the company had to decide based on what most of the members wanted, which is to keep kick Rachel out of the group. Jessica mentions that the book is fictional, but this particular scene, along with her Weibo post and the confessions from her fan site and insiders, all link up together. These insiders had also said that they accused specific members of being the main reasons behind Jessica's departure from the group. They claimed that there was a vote to decide whether Jessica should stay or leave, and some members voted in different directions. Again, we have no idea what happened in that meeting or who's at fault for everything that went down, but Jessica mentioned that the majority won when it came to decisions whether they be big or small ones. In general, it seems like all parties have moved on. Of course, they still get questions about it seeing as everyone is still curious about what went on, but the answers are general and don't get into it much. Jessica has her solo career, and the members of Girls' Generation are doing their own thing. As Jessica mentioned, the past is in the past, and that she's already moved on from everything, so what's left to do is support everyone. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.